The Biochemistry of Cancer, Part 1. By the end of this lecture, you will be able to describe, using examples, the six original hallmarks of cancer. You will also be able to illustrate using diagrams the mechanisms involved in each tumorigenic process. In a seminal review article in 2000 entitled The Hallmarks of Cancer, Hannah and Weinberg uniquely describe six key properties that are common to all cancers. In essence, they describe cancer cells as cells that refuse to die. The first of these properties is a cancer cell's self-sufficiency in growth signals. In order to continue growing and dividing, cancer cells will often produce their own growth factors by upregulating the gene expression of various growth factors or by upregulating the expression of the cell surface receptors that bind to these growth factors. And often, cancer cells will do both. This is an example of autocrine signaling. However, cancer cells can also stimulate other neighbouring cells to produce growth factors for them, and this is called paracrine signaling. In addition to this, cancer cells are also able to regulate the amount of growth factors they receive by remodelling the extracellular matrix beneath them. This is referred to as the bioavailability of growth factors. Tumor cells also self-regulate their own growth and proliferation by developing mechanisms to ignore the normal stop signals that they receive to stop growing when they should. And this is called insensitivity to anti-growth signals. In this way, tumor cells bypass the gene op phase of the cell cycle and re-enter the cell cycle for another round of replication. One example of how tumor cells do this is by deactivating the retinoblastoma protein, PRB, which acts as a gatekeeper to the cell cycle. PRB normally responds to growth inhibitory signals, but in tumours it is deactivated, rendering it unresponsive. As a result, the cell is allowed to continue through the cell cycle, replicating itself again. Another example of how tumour cells ignore anti-growth signals is by downregulating gene expression of the tumour suppressor protein P53. P53 is also known as the guardian of the genome because it is usually switched on in response to DNA damage alerting the cell to either repair the damaged DNA or triggering apoptosis if the damage is beyond repair. An example of this is in sunburn. So if the UV rays from the sun damage the DNA in your skin, P53 is switched on. If the damage is beyond repair, the cells undergo apoptosis. And you can observe this as peeling skin following a bout of sunburn. However, cancer cells are clever, and so they'll find many ways around our natural defence mechanisms. So for example, if P53 was successfully switched on, cancer cells can use an alternative mechanism to evade the program of apoptosis that has been triggered by this response. The result is the persistence of damaged DNA, which is then passed on to progeny cells. A fine balance between pro- and anti-apoptotic proteins, members of the BCL2 family, regulates this response. Remember that the majority of mutations a tumour maintains in this way will confer some level of survival advantage over healthy neighbouring cells. In an ordinary healthy cell, life expectancy is managed by special sequences of DNA on the ends of the chromosomes. These are called telomeres. Each time a cell divides and the replicated DNA is passed on to the progeny cells, the telomeres are degraded more and more until eventually they disappear, leaving the coding section of DNA exposed. At this point, a cell would receive a signal to either die by apoptosis or exit the cell cycle and become senescent. Tumor cells have evolved a mechanism to evade this process by upregulating the expression and activity of an enzyme called telomerase, which adds portions of DNA onto the ends of the telomeres. The result is a tumor cell that can divide an infinite number of times, and so damaged, mutated DNA persists and is continually passed down to the progeny cells. When a tumor grows rapidly, the cells in the center of the mass don't readily have access to oxygen and nutrients from the bloodstream. Although cancer cells have evolved the ability to survive under hypoxic conditions for a time, they will eventually require access to the blood in order to survive and grow. So in order to do this, they have evolved a mechanism to grow their own vasculature, and this is called angiogenesis. In a similar fashion to apoptosis, angiogenesis is regulated by a fine balance between pro- and anti-angiogenic factors, such as VEGF, a pro-angiogenic factor, and thrombospondin-1, an anti-angiogenic factor. <clears throat> Finally, tumour cells often develop an aggressive invasive phenotype whereby they become more motile and can move to a distant site. 
with over 90% of cancer-related deaths resulting from the secondary metastasis and not from the primary tumour, understanding this mechanism is key to designing future chemotherapies. Next, we will look at the two enabling characteristics and the two emerging hallmarks described by Hannah Hannon-Weinberg in her follow-up article, Hallmarks of Cancer, the Next Generation.